Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I have literally been at the capital of uh, this great country, and a lot of you follow me, but that's one place I've never been, uh, was Washington, D.C. I actually flew out of Dulles uh, about a couple of months ago, but it was absolutely one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Uh, I know Amanda is a huge Nahu uh, proponent, and I thank her for that. Uh, her and a lot of people have been on me for years, and I am finally on the bandwagon, so that's good. But I did put out in the chat uh, where I can be found. That's usually one of the questions. Um, we do have a Queen of the Bundle Insiders group, which is where we put a lot of the trainings and the YouTubes and some of the different contests we're doing, our contests are really driven to just sharing our YouTube channel. Um, some of you have seen some of this in some form or fashion, but the third 6090 came about, and I love to start right here with all of you today because I was uh, coaching a group up in Utah, and it was a Utah, Wyoming, uh, pretty much Med Advantage office. One thing I realized about being in the great state of Ohio uh, with Amanda last year was the fact that there's so much med advantage in y'all state and some good plans, but they still need a comprehensive, um, I like to call a uh, backdrop, something that will take care of when the hammer falls. And a lot of that has to do with just knowing where your customers get hurt and uh, where their children may want to step in. So if you haven't seen a training in the last six months, we've added some new stuff. And it basically happened when somebody asked me um, if I were buying plans for my parents today, what would I buy? And so I'll uh, go over a lot of that with y'all today. This presentation will be provided uh, to Amanda. You are not allowed to use any of it in selling, but as she spoke, we talked about the uh, Aetna cancer at the beginning. Uh, two of the products that I've designed that we're going to visit about in this presentation today is the Aetna Cancer Plan. Uh, one of the things uh, that I am horrible about is uh, not remembering things these days. So one of the things I've learned to do is start taking notes, but I also want you to pay attention. So that's why you're going to be paid this I mean, you're going to be given this presentation. And then I will say these are write down moments. And uh, because some of the things are not built in the presentations, a lot of people like to call them Galenisms. I don't know if that's what they're called, but I will give you some little nuggets um, to have along the ride today. But one of the things with the two plans that we're going to talk about in the 30, 60, 90, back to the Utah organization, um, those guys were like Galen and they, two guys, super honest in the conversation said, We've been selling zero premium for so long, we think we've forgotten how to sell. And the products that you're bringing to us are definitely necessary, but what we wanna do is know how to ask for the money. And so that's where 306090 was created. So we'll talk about the Manhattan Life uh, Dental Vision and Hearing. Um, and we'll also talk about the Aetna Cancer Plan. Both of those are excellent to sell in MedSA, MedAdvantage, and if you're in the underage 65 space as well. So I will also show you those things uh, because I think they're really important. But one of the things I like to start with is the conviction for the agent. Now, most of you know, I don't discuss comp, uh, but I will tell you after this sales call today, and this is a sales training call. Amanda and I are firm believers that you passed your insurance exam. You all know how to read. You all know what the material is. Sometimes it's just really boring to you. But one of the things that will make it not so boring is knowing what's in it for you. So when you take care of your client properly, your client's going to take care of you. And one of the catchphrases we came up with last year was, is if you protect your policyholder, your policyholder protects your persistency, which prote protects your paycheck. So a lot of P's there, I know, but it helps you remember why you're really doing what you're doing. So this uh, page right here 
is basically bus budget-based fact finding. And I'm probably going to pivot back and forth between the different presentation here and there. But I brought this one up today because this was asked of me all weekend. And it was like, how do you get them to listen? Well, that right there, that very first statement, start asking your clients questions. When you ask them questions, they're not going to find you boring. They're going to stay engaged. And you're also talking about them. And one of the things that we know about seniors is a lot of them have been very lonely during COVID and they were lonely before COVID, but they're even more lonely now. And they like to talk about their situation. As agents so many times, we're trying to figure out, does this client really need this? Why would they want this? That's not your job. Your job is to make sure they're well taken care of. So one of the Galenisms that's going to be thrown at you right off the bat is, I want to do a pop review with you. What is your client going to say immediately? Well, it's a pop review. You get to come back and say, it's a package of protection review. Now, this works great if you're calling lock-in leads, if you're calling leads that you didn't get to last open enrollment. Maybe they took a med advantage plan with somebody else, okay? If they did, fantastic. If y'all didn't write down the word fantastic, you should. Um, what I always like to tell agents is that, you know, if they did buy a med advantage or a med sup with someone else, that doesn't mean you're out of the game. What it means is you have every opportunity to build the package of protection that the agent before you did not build. Now, so many of these face-to-face -face agents who are like me, like Amanda, like y'all today, are like, the call centers are still in our business. Well, there's two types of call centers, you guys. There's the call centers that actually sell insurance like you do. And then there's the call center agents that are fed the Joe Namath, the Joe Montana, the Jimmy uh, Walker Dynamite commercial leads. But when you get caught up in that stuff, you're also getting caught up in excuse making. So what I want you to do is rid your head of that today. Just get rid of all that. Get rid of the old saying, they're just tire kickers. What we've got to remember is that we have something to sell anybody we talk to at any time of the day. These products allow you to be employed, uh, even though you're self-employed, 365 days a year. We don't just work in open enrollment. That's kind of like where we plant the seeds, but now we're actually going out and we're watering those seeds and we're irrigating and we're, I don't know what all the farming tools you want to come up with, but that's what we're doing. So that first question right there, what can you afford? That's going to get you an answer. It may say nothing. They may say nothing. That is fantastic when they say nothing. Because when they say, I can't afford nothing, which is incorrect grammar, I get it, or I can't afford anything, then Mrs. Jones, you really can't afford your zero premium plan. And stop there. Don't try to fill that voided silence. That silence is their brain ticking. And they're probably going to come back at you and say, what do you mean I can't afford my zero premium? It's zero. When you come back and say, well, if you're one of those 87% of cancers that are diagnosed in people ages 50 and older, then your zero premium plan could be $629. Now, inevitably, I get an agent in the room that says, how did you come up with $629? Well, if you're selling a give back program, your client is going to be out of pocket $7,550. That divided by 12 is $629. Now, if a client gets diagnosed in June or July, what are the chances that they're going to be finished with chemotherapy, radiation, immunotherapy by the end of the year? It's probably not going to be real good. They're going to be done. And one of the things that we've got to remember why cancer before hospital indemnity, and I make a lot of agents mad when I say this, but I usually get away with it because I always come back with a solution. 
I always say they're selling hospital indemnity because it's the lazy way out. Hospital indemnity is for all conditions, but one of the key words in the plan is hospital. So if your client's going to the hospital and they're going to have some co-pays, if they have the $117,000 crack open your chest surgery, the most that client's going to be out is $1,450. Almost any kid can afford $100 a month for their parents. Almost anybody that's the person that's going through that could figure out a payment plan for $20 a month to pay off $1,450. But this is another Galenism. Oncology clinics, where you're getting chemo and radiation and pharmacies, where you're getting your prescriptions, they do not have charitable funds. Hospitals have charitable fund access. And when they do, if a client can't pay the $1,450, that's an easier amount to go get. Now, you heard me say, or you probably have heard me say, I'm going to say it today for the first time is I sell like I buy. Well, as a child of a parent that I had to take care of, I would rather be out $1,450 than $7,550 times once, times two, plus prescription drugs. These same agents that asked me this in the state of Utah said, well, you're only at $30. And I'm like, dude, you were at zero. It's easier to go from 30 to 90 then it is zero to 30. So you've got to build up a lot of reasons why. So you're going to get three objections typically. And I think I'm going to go back to this other, uh, well, we'll stay with this. I'm going to give Amanda both presentations, but I'm going to tell you all to write something down really quick. If a client is at $30, and they truly come back and say, I just don't have it. I, can, I can't even afford to eat. Now, typically that's a dual or an LIS or somebody that's really broke. And I'm going to talk to you about Medicaid in a minute on these type policies. But what you need to remember is their sons, their daughters, they might would rather spend a dollar a day instead of pulling out of their 401k. Because I can promise you, as a child of a parent, and probably two, because they're pretty sure my mother had kidney cancer when she died, the truth of the matter is, you would do anything to help your parents. But being able to pay a dollar a day or a monthly premium, whether it's for cancer or whether it's for short term recovery care or home health care, that's easier for children to manage. So that's another thing you've got to get your head wrapped around. So there's three objections, right? The first objection, I got to think about it. What you got to think about? Either you can afford the $629 a month or you can't. So if you can't, who is that burden going to fall on? Well, I would guess my son, my daughter, my, my sister, I don't know. Okay, well, let's get them on the phone. I don't expect you to be the licensed agent. That's what I do. Let me talk to your son and daughter because I would rather pay that for my parent. When you say something like that to a customer, they immediately feel your heart. They feel that you care. And that old saying that people will do business with people who care about them, that's who they trust. That is legit. It happens every day. So if you're talking to somebody and they've got a spouse in the house, we already know, because some of you have been on it, and if you've not, there's a YouTube out there. Amanda's got some recordings as well. The cancer plan with Aetna allows you to use the youngest spouse so if you were looking at a 65-year-old and he was 65, his premium would be like 38, nine, let's see, 30, 29.90 for $10,000. Using the 58-year-old, which is me, as the first, well, now our premium is 38.90. So for just $9 more a month, 
we both now have $10,000. But if I'm that spouse in the house that doesn't have any health insurance because we don't really qualify for a subsidy and we make just a little too much money, but we really can't afford $1,500 a month for health insurance, those are your people in that 50 to 64 range. I call it the bridge to Medicare. Those people may not have any health insurance because they think they're going to go to county. Well, if they go to county, great. But if they get diagnosed with cancer, they're still over age 50. You are now creating your turning 65 client. And you've got to remember, five years ago, the turning 65 lead was about eight bucks. Eight dollars. Because of all these commercials that are running, you've got a holding company. They got four or five companies that they send the leads through. That turning 65 lead, this last open enrollment was $123 on average. So when you start mining down and working that 50 to 64 age group, you're starting to build a new clientele that becomes yours because the more policies you have with the client, the better off you are. Now in the 30, 60, 90 over here, you see these 30, 60, 90s off to the left side. If a client's got a med advantage, then this is the way you normally go. You do lump sum cancer. We've updated our actual form that I'll also send Amanda. It looks really pretty now. But you'll be able to now see that some of these clients are better off doubling up on cancer instead of taking hospital indemnity. But we still have the agent out there that really likes to sell the hospital indemnity. They think it's a good fit. And you know what? Different strokes for different folks. And I'm not talking just the agents. I'm talking your clients. Because some of them may have conditions that worry them about being in the hospital or that's hereditary in their family. So meds up, you see, we start with dental vision and hearing, then we go lump sum cancer. I disagree with that, but our meds up agents firmly believe it's easier to get a dental vision and hearing client than it is a cancer client. So they like to go dental vision and hearing, then lump sum cancer. When I'm training call center agents, we start with cancer for the very reason on the med advantage client. There is no max out of pocket on prescription drugs. That's one thing I heard the last four days is these drugs are so expensive. So many agents actually think that not all clients' drugs are required to be on a PDP after they're 65, which is not true. But they go to tier five when they're a cancer drug and they immediately hit catastrophic threshold. And some of those Drugs on the catastrophic threshold, and I'll show you the next slide, they're just so expensive, okay? So you're going to find out that clients are going to like this mix. But again, what I told you is a fact. Going zero to 30 is harder than 30 to 90. Once they buy in. Now, a lot of you are selling uh, med advantage plans that have give back dollars, the next best sales uh, tip that I'm going to give you today is when you are selling one of those give back programs, always say this carrier in order to keep zero premium has stripped some benefits out of this and they're giving you money back. But we need to invest that in your package of protection first. Now, your book of business is always your best asset. And the reason that is, is they trusted you once, they'll trust you again. But in the sake of wasting time, you're going to ask your clients for three no's. Those three no's are either going to lead to a yes, or it's going to be moved on to the next. And the reason I give you all that in rhyme is so that you'll remember it. Because you can solve ignorance you cannot, stop, you cannot solve stupidity. And I know that sounds really harsh when you're dealing with seniors, but sometimes people's priorities are not where they need to be. People don't wake up on a Saturday or Sunday saying, oh, I get to go buy an insurance policy. They buy insurance policies for the what ifs. 
So you have to make those what ifs as if they happen and what they would be out of pocket if it were to happen. A lot of times I will coach agents on the cancer plan to use in the underage market, use the catchphrase of income protection. In the senior market, it's asset protection. More and more seniors are finding out with the interest that they're earning from the banks that it's better to buy more cancer coverage at around a dollar to three dollars a day than what they're earning on their money. So it's really, really important to lay it out in a way that they understand it. That's why when you say, did you realize if you're one of those 87% of the cancers that are diagnosed in age 50 and older, your zero premium plan goes to 629. That right there gets their attention. Now this slide right here can be used in your selling presentation. It's a third party endorsement. It shows right here that it's not the donut hole that costs these customers the ridiculous amounts of money. It's the catastrophic threshold. So knowing how their PDP works or their MAPD is really, really important. And the reason we've started training off the 30, 60, 90 is so that you're focusing more in on how to position with certain clients. So let's talk about the different clients you're going to have from this point until we get to October 1st, okay? You're going to have your book of business. The way you call your book of business is real simple. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, just want to call you and thank you for doing business with me last year. With COVID, the way it is, I want to make sure that you've got your cards in a really safe place. I want to make sure that your sons or daughters or whoever's going to take care of you, if you end up in a hospital or a nursing home facility or a long-term care facility, they know how to get their hands on your cards. By the way, and y'all have to remember some of these terms I've been using for Amgawa um, years. I celebrate 37 years in this industry on May 12th. But by the way, is a segue to help you collect your thoughts, but it's also a way to help your client understand that what you're trying to truly do is build them a package of protection. By the way, I just went through a great training and I've known about these cancer protection plans. You have a fantastic health insurance plan. The only problem we've got, and use that term, the only problem we've got. I've had agents say, shouldn't we use concern? That's what everybody says. I said, nope, because you've got to remember your client. When they don't have any money, it's not a concern, y'all. It's a big old problem. And when it's a big old problem, it's better to solve the big old problem right now instead of when the what if occurs and they don't have the money. So you can use this presentation with life insurance. You're out of AEP. You can use it with life insurance. You can use it with home health care, short-term recovery. You can use it with dental. You can use it with hospital indemnity, and you can use it with cancer. So those are five plans I just named, plus you got the health insurance plan. The average number of policies that a senior has with Aetna is around 2.1 policies right now. Whereas when we designed the cancer plan, they were writing about $800,000 a year in annualized premium in 2013. We write in excess of $800,000 a month now. Last month was $1.5 million in annualized premium. Last month. What does that tell you? You may be sitting there saying, I can't get anybody to buy this. Well, that's your first problem. You're using the word can't. 
eliminate can't from this noggin, this vocabulary. Put in I can and I will provide the best package of protection I possibly can for my client. So when you're working your current book, it's went through this great training, want to go through it with you. It's around a dollar to three dollars a day. Want to get this taken care of immediately because there is a 30 day wait on these plans. And we know that cancer doesn't care when you turn 65. We know that 87% of cancers are diagnosed in people ages 50 and older. And we also know that you have a zero premium plan because of affordability. So what we wanna do is take some of the liability in your health insurance plan and make it a comprehensive plan. When you use those terms, they know those terms because if they've had any type of car insurance, they're very familiar with that. Now, the second kind of lead you're gonna call is a client that you didn't sell. Maybe they did business with someone else, okay? If they did, that's fine. What you're gonna say is, that's fantastic. That's a great plan. There are others out there that I would love to show you in the next open enrollment, but for right now, that's a great plan. What cancer protection did they place in your package of protection? And shut up and listen, because then this is where your objections are going to come. I can't afford it. We've already gone over that one. I need to check with my spouse or I need to check with my son or daughter. We've already gone over that one. Let's get them on the phone right now. The third one is, well, I really can't get hold of them right now. Okay, fine. When you put gas in your car, do you call your spouse or your son or your daughter to ask them if you can put gas in your car? Well, that runs anywhere from $150 to $200 a month, typically. This is for your protection. This is just not going in a tank and going to waste away. This is for your protection. This is so you don't run through any savings that you may have, so that you don't become a burden on your son or daughter. So those things work you guys and you need to start bringing them in your presentation prescription drugs are the biggest hole in a med advantage plan next to the large out of pockets now inevitably i'll have an agent on the phone that says hey i've got a 3500 max plan i sell well for some of these people it could have been a million dollars 3500 is relative depending on the person so the presentation works the same. Don't be afraid to use it. And for those of you on this call that are sitting there and you're really talking now that, you know, oh, I don't like those dental plans. You know, those are $34 and they only get $1,500 or $1,000. Well, you guys hopefully are doing well enough financially that you don't have to worry about scrummaging up $2,000 for a root canal or a crown. For a client that's buying MedAdvantage, unless they're just wealthy and choose to buy MedAdvantage, to come up with 1,000, 1,500 or 2,000 when your tooth is throbbing outside of your head, that's a lot of devastation for that senior. They don't wanna ask their children for 1,000, 1,500 or 2,000 but they end up having to. So again, this might be something that the son or daughter or the one that's gonna be responsible for has to pay. They might would rather pay a monthly premium. So when you break it down like that, these children automatically look at it as a very good insurance for them that they're not gonna to have to go pull out of their 401k. They also like it because if the parents do have any savings, it's not withering away at some type of inheritance they might get or to pay for the client's funeral. 
The next bullet there, only 12% of Americans over 65 have dental coverage. There's a reason for that. Agents are not asking for it. That's why seniors are drawn to all the bait and switch type commercials because they're hearing zero premium for what? Dental. Manhattan Life's dental vision and hearing, and we have a competitive analysis and a comparison analysis tool that we can provide all of you that show all the dental programs out there and why Manhattan's the best. We have one now that will cover majors. It covers 20%. But I always ask agents to take a step back and think about that. If your clients aren't really having any issues, you're better off selling them the legacy plan because it really does sink in around a dollar a day. And it's something that they can manage and they're not going to lapse it. The other thing about Manhattan is they can use that lump sum of money for whatever they want. So they may come in year one and get all the dental stuff that, that they let go for years now resolved. Then envision the next year, hearing the next year. And again, if they have a Med Advantage plan that does have a great discount with it, or they've got some dental benefits on their Med Advantage plan, but they don't have any vision and hearing, they can still file that dental claim on the Manhattan Life. And a lot of times it helps offset any out-of-pocket costs that they might incur. Remember, these are cash plans. So they get to negotiate cash. And that's very important. The other thing I want to make sure y'all didn't miss at the beginning is that oncologist, audiologist, dentist, they do not have charity funds. There was a thing that was going on at NAHU this week about dentists who just literally will price gouge a dental plan because they are the cash pay kings. So we've got to remember that our client is different. And that question down there at the bottom, when was the last time you had your teeth cleaned? That gets them talking. Even if they say none of your business, you can say, well, the reason I'm asking that now that we're building you a package of protection is good oral hygiene is always going to keep the rest of your body feeling and being more healthier. More brain tumors are diagnosed from an eye exam because people go into an eye exam with bad headaches. A lot of people are diagnosed with cancer and coronary artery disease through dental exams. And that has to do with the gums. So those are really, really important things to remember. Now your MedSup client, a lot of times buys the MedSup because they wanna to go to any doctor, any hospital, but they forget that a lot of times that these hotels that are connected to the hospitals, those are not covered under Medicare. They have to pay for those. Some of these folks are traveling to their sons and their daughters and living with them while they undergo cancer. They can use this money to get there. They can use that money for any added burden that might come into play now that they're living with the son or the daughter. But more importantly, on MedSup, we want to remember the PDP portion of it. It works identically to what the MAPD does. So again, we talked about the dental. You know, we've talked about the cancer. All of this is going to be provided to you guys. And we will make sure that you have all the tools that you need. Now, one of the things that I want to go out here and see if I can pick up really quick, and I'll share again here in a minute, I think it's this one. Uh, yeah, so this is one that I'm going to send Amanda as well. Let me hit share again. Okay. So while you're doing that, we have a couple of questions that came sure. through. 
Yeah. The first one is, is how strict is the underwriting on the cancer plans? Are there a lot of conditions that are hard to pass? I have so many clients who have a lot of health issues. So, uh, well, hang on, Amanda. I want to make sure that I paid attention to the question. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to find what I pulled up for you that just left the building. It's like Elvis. Okay, so let's come back to this. And then I'm going to go back and hit share. And hopefully this one's going to pop up. If not, I'll take that other one off. Okay, so uh, Amanda, go ahead and ask me that question one more time. Okay, so the question is, is how strict is the underwriting on these plans? Are there a lot of conditions that are, hard, are a hard pass? I, I have so many clients who have a lot of health issues. Okay, so dental vision and hearing is guaranteed issue. So no problem there. We're talking there. about the cancer plans. On cancer, all you have to do is do a five-year look back on treatment in the state of Ohio. A lot of agents ask when they were diagnosed with cancer. You have to ask when their last treatment was finished. The heart attack and stroke part of it, we don't sell a lot of when we're in the med advantage markets. You'll see it sold more in the Medicare supplement arena. There are some more questions on the heart attack and stroke, but it's really more about uncontrolled high blood pressure. And it's all, and it has to be controlled for a year um, at a one, I think it's at 130 over, there's a number in the guide. And I'll get back to you on that. Don't let me forget that. The other one is, you know, heart attacks. They have to be five-year treatment-free on heart attack, stroke, surgeries, all that great stuff. So if they're taking a blood thinner for their heart, um, that's not going to fly. So that's why we stick to cancer. They can't have had AIDS or HIV uh, treatment. Hold on one second, you guys. I'm going to mute y'all a minute. So while she's muting out, um, I'm going to answer this question that Karina has. How do we reason that they will max out a pocket on their, on their plan move automatically when they're diagnosed with cancer? So guys, when someone has cancer and they are going to automatically go into having a chemo treatment, those chemo treatments are covered under part B as in Bravo, not D as in David which means that they have a 20% coinsurance and part B medications, B as in Bravo, is covered under the medical part of their Advantage plan. Because of that, that means that the 20% coinsurance applies to the max out of pocket. And if you don't know, chemotherapy medications can cost anywhere between 50,000 to $250,000 a session. So it is pretty imminent if someone has cancer, they are sure as anything going to go ahead and hit that, that move, which is where her comment went that came from. Does that make sense so, guys? I love that you hit that, Amanda. So can you see this uh, slide that I just popped up, the specialty yeah. cancer med calls? Okay, so if you've been doing meds up, any time at all, y'all have heard of Revlimid, okay? This is usually a maintenance drug. Uh, it can be given one time, but it's usually maintenance. When you add the catastrophic threshold over a 12-month period, this client could be out $14,461. You know, tamoxifen's it, it's just crazy what they do to these seniors on these drugs. But Amanda is absolutely correct. They can be crazy expensive. And Amanda, I'm going to send you this presentation as well with the other one, because the other one is the highlights, you know, how to get the right questions out there. This is the, this is the substance, you guys. And if you've not used the rate sheet, let me show you how this rate sheet works. Because Amanda touching on drugs is really important. So we talked about the 69-year-old spouse in the house. And then we talked, 
you know, how to use the rate sheet. The rate sheet is what you can use in the house. So you'll see over here that 50,000 gets very expensive for this 65 year old. But if you're talking to that spouse in the house and that 3890 on that husband and wife, you don't ever want to ask if you want to add on any kids. If they have kids in the house, you add them on. It doesn't matter if they have one or 19 kids. It's going to be $40.35, less than two bucks a month. And when those kids turn 26, if you've done your job, you're going to call that client back and say, congratulations, you're 26, you get to pay your own bills finally. No, you're not going to say that. You got to have a little bit of funny in the money. But you can show them how much smarter they are than their parents. And if they've got a kid now, they're married, they can buy 75 grand for like 34 bucks. But if it's a husband and wife and family, now you're picking up more premium. And that's why I'm saying go to your comp schedule. Figure out the math on this. I had a guy two weeks ago literally said, I'm making as much money on this as I do my med advantage and med sub. Had another guy call me the day before New Year's Eve and said, guess what, Mama Galen? I said, what? He said, I'm going to make an extra $50,000 by the time I collect all my commissions by February 28th. Mama's going to get to quit working. And we're going to start our family. We're going to start making those babies. She's not going to have to work anymore. He had no idea until he went and started figuring out the math. This is a guy two years in the business. And now he's teaching all the guys that have been doing it for 15 and 20 years how to add these plans. I talked to you guys about the client that has the open your uh, chest heart situation. This is why we do cancer first, because on a $117,000 surgery hospital indemnity, those things can get loaded up in premium. If you add riders onto hospital indemnity and they cancel the hospital indemnity, well, guess what? They just cancel their cancer coverage. That's why it's cancer first. You can obviously see why. This is not rocket science. So Amanda, I'll let you keep going down the questions and I'm going to bring up different slides as we hit different questions. Okay. So um, the next one is actually a dental question. Manhattan Life, is it in Massachusetts? Okay, so that's a product availability chart. We're going to have to go to their portal and look up. So that's a takeaway. Um, if you're contracted with Manhattan Life, their product availability chart is super easy to find in your portal. Um, and I got asked about Massachusetts last week in Connecticut. One of those is approved, but I can't remember which. Sorry. No worries. Okay, and then the next question, um, I answered a little bit of it, so I'm going to read the question and, it, and my answer, and then we can expand. Are, okay. the, are, are the Part D cancer drugs not covered by MAPD and uh, PDPs? So Part D is in David cancer drugs can go ahead, and those are the ones that you get at the pharmacy. Depending on how they are submitted, one, they need to check the formularies on any of the plans to see whether they're covered or not. As a rule of thumb, anything that is on a clinical trial is not going to be covered by Medicare and therefore will not be covered on any type of plan. So you really have to go ahead and look by what the medication is to figure that out. And then also um, some of those cancer meds, because of how they are filed, can go ahead and be covered under part B as in Bravo, even though they are being picked up at the pharmacy. So that's because your conversation. And what's great about where Amanda led off with that clinical trial is really a gotcha moment. Uh, some of these drugs still are showing as clinical trial and way old. So sometimes doctors can write a prescription different on some of these cancer drugs. So if they go to the pharmacist and they get pharmacists and they get stuck there, that is worth asking. Uh, I was telling some folks yesterday, my husband is on metformin for 
uh, type two diabetic and they wrote it in a wrong milligram and he pulled up to the window and it was a $14,000 metformin prescription. So don't always think your doctor knows how to write a prescription and don't always think the pharmacist knows what they're doing. That, that is another thing that you need to be aware of. But what we saw during last year and 2020, because the compromised immuno systems, these seniors could not go in and get administered chemo. So some of those administered chemos come in oral medications. They, during 2020 and 21 especially, were being written where some of those could be covered under their Part B deductible. So that is something else to remind your clients of when you're talking to them, because this can get really icky sticky uh, there. On the, uh, uh, there was one other thing Amanda said about the, uh, the cancer drug while ago. We talked about the clinical trial, talked about MAPD and PDP. Typically MAPDs and PDPs, they, they run just alongside each other. One's just integrated, one's a standalone. But there are different plans out there that will handle drugs differently. So, you know, when you're doing the PDP finder with your client, here's a perfect example of one right here. A lot of agents for a long time said if a client had an F or a G and they had a PDP, they were well taken care of. This shows they're not. Right here, this particular client, uh, if he had had a $5,000 cancer plan, this particular drug can only be taken three months at a time. It's for colon cancer that's like really aggressive. Well, 129508 times three months, $5,000 plan would have helped that client. So something is better than nothing. But that underage 65 client whose drugs are not required to be on formulary, they would have pulled up and it would have been a 25,000, almost $26,000 drug. A lot of your older men will say, they can just put me in a pine box, send me in the ground, whatever. But when you immediately say, well, what if that was your wife? Or what if that was your partner? Or what if that was your child? That makes them take a step back. Don't be afraid to say things like that to your clients. Those are called wake up moments. It's like that little heart thing you put on their chest to get them thinking again and breathing again. That is a question you need to be able to ask and be willing to ask. So I'll let you go to the next one, Amanda. Actually, we're good. We're caught up. Wow. 17 comments. And they must have been really good ones. Probably Amanda's book that she loves to write that is always so good that I love to read. Um, so, oh, there I see... Um, People I know are in the call today. So that is so awesome. Uh, let's see, Madeline Life is in mass, but no DVH. Okay, so I need to find you a DVH plan in Massachusetts is what I'm hearing. Okay, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can solve in these deals. Anybody else have any questions? No, but I'll go ahead and I'll answer the question. Um, so, uh, if you're specifically looking for a DV, uh, a dental vision plan, I don't believe that they have the hearing, but look at national dental care. Uh, I believe that they're in Massachusetts and, um, look at, uh, Emeritus. I believe that they are, I'll double check while we're on the call, but I think they are. Good. Good. Okay. Well, so y'all will be getting these two presentations. Um, you'll see in this one that I'm going to send you guys that you'll see some of this competitive, uh, comparisons on the traditional and the new DVH select, uh, with Manhattan. So the, these are going to be tools that a lot of you may not have. Um, and we'll make sure that, uh, Amanda has these, uh, for you guys. So. I don't think I have anything else, Amanda, unless you don't think I didn't cover something. Mm, Are you talking am, on mute no, again? I just came off mute. Okay, oh, I did okay. just look. Emeritus is um, does have uh, is in Massachusetts. So, Joy, take a look at that one, and then you are good to go. 
Um, we do have more questions. So the I'm next one that those. we have, um, can they cancel cancer policy at any time or is there a certain time they have to keep the plan? Okay. So I'm glad that, cause there's like two questions that are kind of similar. So I'm going to answer them all in one little bundle here. And that's going to come back to the one on canceling. So yes, they can cancel a cancer plan at any time, um, but that is crazy. And they typically don't. Cancer plans are the most persistent because they're afraid if they cancel a cancer plan, they're going to get cancer. Um, if the question on if you buy a $10,000 cancer plan and you're diagnosed, do you get all 10,000 at once? You do. The other thing you've got to remember in Ohio, you guys have the recurrence rider benefit with the new CHAZ 2.0. And what that does is that really helps your persistency and it helps your clients keep paying the premium, even though they get diagnosed with cancer, they file a claim. If they go another uh, two years uh, past their treatment, they can file on their policy again. And if they go up to nine years cancer-free, they can get 100% of their benefit again. So these people will actually keep these cancer plans because they're afraid of getting diagnosed again. So that helps your persistency. So make sure you add the recurrence rider on and you explain to the client what it actually does for them. That is always huge. Um, and as always, Amanda and I appreciate all of y'all's really sweet comments. That's always nice when you get on these WebExes because we know we can bore people to tears or we can make them laugh nonstop. And I try to do a little bit of both um, because some of this is just flat boring. You, yep. you know, you, you, you can put lipstick on. It's not going to change it. But the other part of it, you can and it it makes it fun because you're helping people. And I think that that is the one thing y'all have got to remember when you ask somebody, hey, I want to do a pop review with you. Don't be afraid to say that. Some of y'all think that's corny, cliche, you know, crazy. It probably is. All of those. But if you think about the commercials that attract you the most, they're silly. That's why the Super Bowl is talked about for weeks after about commercials because they're catchphrases, they're tags that people will keep talking about. And guess what else? Your clients will tell their friends, hey, Amanda did a pop review for me and this is what I've got now. The more policies your client has with you, the more they're going to stay with you. And there is nothing wrong with busting out an agent's credibility that didn't do their job. If an agent doesn't do their job, then make them fight for that client. You have every right to that client that they do. And they may keep their health insurance with Amanda, but they might take dental with me. They might take cancer with me. They, they might take three policies with me and just leave the health with Amanda. We still worked out pretty good in that arrangement. So don't forget to do your homework. Uh, when you leave today um, and make sure that you take care of what your comp is. You know what it is. Somebody asked a question. Can you tell us if you prefer Manhattan Life versus Aetna Senior Supplemental? I'm assuming that's on dental. Um, if it's on cancer, I like all of them equally. They're very much the same, but the difference between Manhattan Life's dental and Aetna's dental is using the full amount of money for anything you want. There is a cap on the vision uh, with Aetna's dental, and they also have a PPO uh, network. Manhattan has a network, but you don't have to use it. You can use it if you want, but it's not a requirement. Um, so I hope that answered that question. And I think we got them all. Nope, we got two more. So oh, the next well, one is, is that, and they actually are kind of the same. So I'm going to combine okay. them. Um, if they buy a $10,000 can cancer plan and they, they are diagnosed with cancer, do they get a, the payout of the $10,000 all at once? How does the repeat diagnosis work? And then the third question is, is it, how do they know that the money is being spent towards 
cancer related issues and not going and blowing it on lottery tickets, alcohol and stupid stuff. Well, that's the absolute beautiful thing about the Aetna cancer plan. When you get the money, it's your money. You get to spend it however you want. Now, I told y'all earlier, I was going to talk about the duels and the Medicaid risk. So if you write a client a cancer plan and they are on Medicaid, if they don't spend that money on cancer stuff, that can be held against them in their Medicaid qualification. So that is different than a Medicare supplement or a client that's just a regular MedAdvantage client. When they get their money, it's their money. But if they are a Medicaid recipient and they get a $10,000 check from Aetna, they have to put that on their Medicaid application. However, if they spent that money on drugs, if they spent that money on somebody coming in and taking care of them, if they spent that money to go stay with somebody, Medicaid reviewers look at that and that does not count against them. But you have to be very careful with that because I'm telling you, it's like when you do a Medicaid application and they have a whole life insurance policy. It's very little cash value but you still have to list it on the Medicaid application. Doesn't count against them because it's such a small amount. But that is one thing I, I like to warn all of you about. The uh, $10,000, yes, it's paid all at once, like we said earlier, but they don't have to spend it on cancer anything. They can go to the Hawaiian Islands if they want to, unless they're that Medicaid recipient. I wouldn't advise that. And I'm glad that's being recorded um, <laughs> exactly. because that is a fact, Jack. Yeah. So um, Galen, thanks for the time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you need the Aetna Senior Supplemental Contract, that is a separate contract from the Aetna MA Part D. It is for Aetna Senior Supplemental. So if you need that, um, reach out to your upline, reach out to Galen, reach out to myself, request the contract. We will all be happy to help you, but that is a completely separate um, contract that you do need. Um, Galen, as always, thank you so much for spending the time and doing this fantastic presentation, answering all the questions. It's always a good one for us to go ahead and do this. And I can't wait to see you in May when I'm in Dallas and see you in, at Ms. Medicare. So. Thank you. It's Thank be you, everybody, great, for attending. And um, great I'll talk with you. time. I love all you guys. Have a great week. Always check with Amanda if you've got anything you need. We're here to help you all. Uh, our goal is to make you as successful as you want to be and can be. So have a um, great day. Thanks again, Amanda, for having me. Thank you. All right. Bye, y'all.